you for the first time actually <laughs> i play your music i know about you but uh this first time i'm actually properly meeting you the pleasure so, is mine um, thank you so much th- thank you for coming first and foremost um how did the name ktk come about or why pick ktk for the name of the album okay so ktk infanti means train okay and um I picked the train because uh, the album is like a soul train. Okay. It takes you through several genres of music. Mm. There's reggae, there's high life, there is um, worship, contemporary stuff. And then it also takes you through different themes. Mm. So there are happy moments on the album and there are not too happy moments on the album. There are a few sad moments on the album where we are praying to go like the mama and said, oh, don't want you to butcher before. So. Yeah. And then uh, all that. So um, it will take you through KTK of, of life where several seasons of it. So that's, okay. that's basically what the train does. How long did it take you to create this body of work? Ooh, that's a good one. Mm. Um, Normally for an album within a month or two okay oh that quickly but it's yes. relatively quickly yes it is <laughs> I, no I, I would explain because um songwriting is one of the things i do for a living ah. i write jingles for companies and other things so on the ah. spare of the moment i can I, i'm supposed to be able to write okay so i don't do that i ah. wait till maybe it's time to record an album and then make sure that the ideas that are coming to me are for that project and once I get it done, I normally don't change anything. Mm. Oh, if, really? If, if there's something to do, it will happen on the next one. Interesting. For creative people, sometimes we are all over the place. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but how many albums have you put out so far? Six. Okay. And how different is KTK from everyone else? Or everything um, else? K- KTK is different, I would say that. Because the last album I did, Hosanna, that was recorded live. Uh, the, and I mean live in an auditorium this is live but this is studio live mm. and I haven't done a studio live album in quite a while Okay. and okay. so this one I mean took me back to my early years when if I, when I started out I was singing even the soprano myself because <laughs> the budget no day you see that <laughs> so we are naked and then you, you do it this you way and then that. you go to the other uh-huh, part thank God for for a little budget so this time we're able to be more expressive and mm. bring other people on mm. board to mm. do other things for me. So, I think this album is very colorful, in my mm. opinion. Okay. And we'll get into the different sides of the album, but let me bring it all the way to the beginning. Um, Tell me. When did you know that music was it for you? What period, what time did you know that music was it for you? Um, when, when I went to piano school at the age of 10, mm. I knew I loved music. I wouldn't say at that time I knew I was going to be a musician. I just knew I loved music. The only part of music that didn't excite me too much was the theoretical part of it because then we're writing exams. Mm. And I was only 10 and some of the things were a bit (laughs) over my head (laughs) for that time. The the exams were British. I mean, it's not like your teacher can... Yeah. uh, You know, that kind of Westminster (laughs) something, something. So that, that period of music was not too exciting for me. But then... What happened was when I when I was in tech, no sorry, when I was in infants, I got to play around with keyboards that could do some form of sequencing. It wasn't mm. real like production, but sequencing. But finishing um Infants Film 1997, we went to record Pastor Joe Beecham's first album. That was the mm. first time I entered a studio. Wow. And you know when when the lights are dim in this room, then the you see the flashes of things on the console and then when there's a sound things up I, I, I said this is it amazing i want to do this <laughs> wow so that period yes i was i was 19 at that time i told myself this is what i want to do my goodness yes. how did your family react to that uh, did you tell them at oh, that point at that point they noticed that attention was shifting okay and they got a bit worried but then the real struggle started when I, I actually said that I wanted to do music school. And my parents said, I'm sure you're joking. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you why, I'll tell you this joke. So I, I was quite adamant about it, mm. that I wanted to do music. And they just couldn't talk me out of it. And it was getting to a heated argument. So I remember those times it was landlines. And you couldn't tell who was scoring. Mm-hmm. So I had click, 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 picked up the phone and it was my grandma from Kumasi. <laughs> and it was just two sentences. Why me? Asking, who is this? 
pressa na na pacho kofi aha na una usa saying no you know i think what what exactly are you saying na usa na na pacho me nka bi bi usa good into me ba tech na wa ba bi shia de what she help papa mommy and then she dropped the phone Agent, that, was that was it. That, that was led it. you to tech. Yes. But did you realize that leading you into tech was actually going to be oh, the that catalyst that you needed? A, you're right. About that. Now let's talk about that because I've been told that your tech days for uh, quite a few artists was very expressional. Like you, you were able to now experiment, and then you were able yeah. to now figure yourselves out musically yeah. and sort of create careers yeah. from that. Now tell me how tech was like in your day. I don't know which year was this. 99 to 2001. Uh-huh. Now describe that period. Um, meeting up with other people that sort of influenced yeah. your sound and created Great. your career for you and how it sort of was a springbok that you became Coda. Exactly. So I would say that tech is one of the best things that happened to me. Huh. If you take salvation and you ram on my wife, <laughs> tech is the next thing. <laughs> I love that. I'm serious. Because you see, what happened was that I had been playing since I was 10. Mm. And I'd become a local champion in Takradi. Really? Very few people could play to my level in my on my in my age group. Wow. And I was already 19 and playing on Pastor Joe Beecham's albums and wow. things. Wow. So I had a small balloon uh-huh. that was growing in my heart. Okay. So when I went to tech, a needle was put in there because <laughs> then I met people who were crazy better than me. Hmm. Oh, way better than me. I met McCaffrey. I met Jerry, I met Henry, and they were all unique in their own way. So I could tell that Charlie Brown, you, you did form by no you know be strange. You are getting it. And it really helped me. I learned a lot from these guys and we all built our music from there. And it's actually from tech that I started singing more because all this time I was playing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Became mass choir director, learned how to to put to put a choir together to give them a sound and that's what mm. is helping me today in my production wow. because when i do that for people for a living because mm. so tech was like music school for us amazing yes, it was. amazing grandma did well she really did yeah, <laughs> she didn't now, realize saying, but that, you know, that, that's a famous <laughs> sentence <laughs> now uh in terms of being a mass choir director how was that like oh i was mass choir director when i was in i think third year final year mm. And I think I was thrown in when I was a bit too young. Okay. And it was it was a good learning care for me, which was also good because then you learn how to you learn how to be a leader to mm. people who are older than you. Interesting. Okay. And that, that thing is an art. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, guess anything. So you need to get things done respectfully because they are your seniors. Mm. But then there's a certain level of quality too that you're looking for. So you need to insist, but in a very polite way. Wow. You get the thing. It's something I had to learn because almost everybody I was working with was a year ahead of me. Mm. You're getting the thing. Mm. Tech Master was good training. Very good. Okay, training. okay, okay. Now that transition from um, Tech Mass Choir to becoming Coda, the artist. Yes. Describe that period for me and how that transition was like. Okay, so um, final year BSU. I was in Baptist Students Union. Sorry, mm. BSU. So we recorded um, an album. Mm. Yes, and the album was was quite a hit in Ghana. Like, yeah. Yeah, by God's grace. And so I knew that the vocals were were coming up small, small, be like mm. that. But then I still didn't think I was cut out to be like a solo artist. So, really? Oh no, 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 no. But after all that you had done, after all the the impressive work that you had created, what impressive work? It, it seemed i mean that album alone you you would assume that you can be able to stand off on your own people no. have people have done that people have had less training and then done done that earlier well you you, you see the, the, the issue i had at that time was that i was like a penalty player <laughs> i mean if you give me one song i'll kill it but now to do it all i mean, I mean when you are an artist they put you on stage for 30 minutes <laughs> see, no hiding <laughs> So I was a good penalty player at okay. that time, you know. One song we could have come and lead and run away. That's mm. one I could do. Mm. You get the thing. But transitioning into, you've been given fifteen minutes, even ten minutes was a struggle for me. Wow. Well, I'm serious. I will lose my voice in almost immediately. Re- stage fright, or was it something more psychological? Like uh, it was more psychological. Yeah, you were down. Some imposter syndrome. Like, <laughs> you know, 
Why am I teasing myself today like this? <laughs> you know, let me tell you this, Joe. Don't laugh. I'll try not to. <laughs> try, pa. I'll momo you if you don't. Seriously. I'm already sad. <laughs> okay. You okay. know, hmm. you know, uh, in, because our ears are a bit close to our mouth, mm. sometimes I think it, it disguises what we think we sound like. Aha. Uh-huh. So, it, you know, I thought I sounded like Luther Vandross. Did, but, don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> don't you? No, I don't. <laughs> so, when we recorded some of the songs on the BSU album and the thing was played back, I said, oh my God. Come on. You know they're from like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was a rude shock for me. That oh, no. I don't sound anything like Luther, man. <laughs> So now accepting that this was my tone mm. and this is what I had to use, it was a process. Mm. So okay. it took a while to get comfortable with that. 2006 is when finally I released something of my own. And I think over the years, I've had encouragement from Neil Kine, from Danny Nete, yes. to keep pushing, keep yes. pushing. And over time, it gets better. Amazing. Yeah. Did you, looking back, um, in the early days, did you expect that you'd become as big of a star as you are now? No. Hmm. I thought I thought I'd I'd be a great producer, hmm. like Uncle Zap Mallet. He's okay. one of my heroes. <laughs> like Uncle Zap or maybe Uncle Sami Helwani. That's where I saw myself, but not standing in front of people as a lead guy. Wow. I didn't want to do that. Wow. And me and Danny Danny Nete had several fights over that thing. So. He actually sucked me from the band. I was his guitarist. He sucked me and got somebody else to play and said, now you are an artist on the bill to prepare songs. I said, Danny, I know guess song. Wow. And he put me on for like three years and insisted that, and when you go on stage and I lose my voice, I remember one of the days at La Palm, I I, I was terrible when I was singing. And when we closed, I thought I'd escaped him. Just when I was descending the staircase, I had this deep tone go like, did you listen to yourself today? Wow. No. Lazy singer. That's what you are. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. Then it was hard on me. But it's for, also for, for my good. Uh, how did you... And sorry to drag up this old memory, but... No, um, um wh- Where were you when you heard about his passing? How... Describe that moment for me. <laughs> okay. So I was in New Jersey. Mm. Um, per New Jersey time, it was 6 a.m. Mm. So I, I was outside praying... Um, and my, my, my biological sister, she really, in fact, she's never done that before where you're praying and she can't call you, mm. but she saw me praying outside in the, in the, in the patio and she comes and goes like, come. Then I'm like, cut it, wait. She said, come. <laughs> then she gave me the phone and said, somebody wants to talk to you. So it happened to be another big brother of mine, Pastor Asma. Then he said, oh, Kofi, how are you? How are you doing? I said, ah, seriously? You called me for this? <laughs> then he said, oh, have you spoken to anybody from Ghana this morning? I said, no, so for Ghana, it's like 1 a.m. What? No, it was 6, so it was like 11 in Ghana hmm. at that time. So I said, I just woke up. They said, oh, okay, 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 okay. Then he has gone to heaven now. <gasps> you know, it sank, but it didn't sink well. I said, so what did you say? They said, Danny has gone to heaven. Oh, it didn't go well. Wow. <laughs> Cried like a little boy. Wow. Yeah, because I was that close to him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I cried like a little boy because we had plans. You see, and I don't know who is listening to this thing, but um, make time for the people that you love. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he called me when he was in the UK. I was at a studio. He ran out of credit. And then he called me back and said that, you, you like to do too much. Step out and go back credit and call me. I said, Danny, make a finish what I did. I will call you, I will call you. That was our last call. No. Yeah, that was our last call. Wow. Yeah. Maybe I should have stepped out and got, yeah. <laughs> and got credit. <laughs> Is this something, a regret that you, you live with still? Yes, because um, I wanted to find out that maybe we didn't finish what he wanted to tell me. Mm. Because the f- first part of the conversation was about the fact that he heard the Yape, the one you played before, yeah. and then he said, Charlie, he likes the way I'm embracing the African rhythms mm. and putting it in, and then talked about Joe Metal too, and said, Charlie, you and Joe are making me so proud, mm. and that kind of thing. Then the thing cut, he said, you like to do too much, go and buy credit and call me. That was it. Wow. Yeah, I don't know what the second part of the conversation would have been. What's about? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Some heavy stuff there. That's all good. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm in the studio with Koda. We're going to do a soft listening of uh, the Kitake album very shortly. If you have any questions for him, please send it in. 0549 Come on. AJ, hi to the man there with you from Bright in Tema. AJ Axe, oh, okay. Axe Coda, when was the last time he hosted a show in Tardy after COVID 19's uh, merge? I suggest Coda should have an annual show like Obi Kanata's made in Tardy and Tardy just to make us go. This feel... guy is definitely he, from Tardy. He is. He's, he says that he wants a collaboration between you and Kofi Kanata. Hey, is that something you ever consider doing? Uh... Coffee, coffee doesn't do Christian music. Do, do you? Are you? A, do you take a hard line to collaborating with secular artists? Yes, please. Oh, you do. Yes, please. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Do, <laughs> <laughs> do, um, uh, okay. Go, go ahead. <laughs> go For some artists, or, or in, in some regards, would you? Cons- reconsider based on the artist or is it secular it's a hard no oh secular is a hard no hmm. uh, yes what led to you making that decision was it from was it was it your is it is it your own personal conviction is it something yes. that you yes you okay your own personal it's conviction. my personal conviction uh. you see just like how city doesn't have three news where they are screaming their heads <laughs> off <laughs> <laughs> but don't you reckon that doing a collaboration with a secular artist could perhaps and en- make the gospel enter places it usually would i i will not deny that it can happen mm. and therefore i would not condemn outrightly any person that does that but i will leave that decision with you and your convictions mm. about the road you want to take okay. i keep saying that in the in the army there's a navy and there's the air force mm. the fact that i don't fly doesn't mean i'm not in the army okay, okay. so maybe i'm meant to swim like the okay. navy okay so okay that's okay okay <laughs> i can't, I can't concur. <laughs> but now let's come to one thing i've wanted to ask you for a long time <laughs> Still on the issue of convictions and how you feel, but in some P, largely me. addresses a lot of my personal issues with the church okay. and how the church is sort of taking a, a switch from the focus on being oh. salvation to being about the prosperity and then okay. a hard focus on that. Mm-hmm. And how did the gospel community or the Christian community receive in some P first? I would say that it was varied varied reactions and mm. um, so let me give you let me give you three of them so one gospel artist called <laughs> one gospel artist called me and told and told no he called neo kind and told neo kind that charlie your brother why <laughs> he record the the guide me who, ghana people they love him no mm-hmm. he can't spoil in career hey. as he can't record this thing the charlie in career no he died at all Really? That was a gospel artist. And one other gospel artist called me and told me that Charlie has a big brother. The advice he has for me is that I should quickly bring out like another song, which is a rejoinder to correct the image because Charlie, I won't get invitations again. No. Uh-huh. And I've met men of God too who have told me that young man, you have a voice, be brave and do what God is asking you to do. Mm. You get it, and so the the opinions have been varied. Now, how describe the creation of this particular song? What 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 were the triggers, or inspirations, <clears throat> or spirit that Great. sort of influenced the creation of the song? Great. So I, I had seen a few things happen on TV. Hmm. I had been to a few programs and seen a few things that were a bit weird to me. Hmm. And then I remember around that time I was getting very lazy. At reading the word of God, it happens to all of us. So I went to my dad and I said that Charlie, this thing I is not working. So he said, you know what? Then pick a book and be systematic about it. Then you know that there's something to read every day. Mm. So he said, James or okay, no, start from Acts. So I just said, fine, no problem. So I started from Acts chapter one. And then I read about the first church and I noticed that 
it's so different from what we have. Mm. And then that phrase slipped out of my mother. Hey, these are not the same anymore. Because I hear you couldn't tell rich from poor when you entered the church. Wow. Like, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, some of our churches today, there's a whole club for the rich people in the church <laughs> that they meet and the man of God prays for them alone. You the, get the, the point? There's particular prayers according to how you give and then give up and give 200 cities. The first 10 people, first 200 people to give me $1,000. Like, Is it here or you actually have been there? I have been in churches that have done that. Okay. And, and I always, I'm always, I cringe a little. And, and yeah. I think it's made me also a bit, I don't know if it's, 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 it's so largely okay. so i personally and this is my own personal um uh, way I, I attend church i attend church i listen to the preaching and i leave i don't want to be a part of anything i don't want to be a member of anything i just go for <laughs> god's word and i go home because i've gotten to a point where i feel that entering or becoming a part of the any group or anything that's what leads into other things that i probably i'm not comfortable with so that's how generally i have i have that. yeah i have, I have started treating how i go Personally, having a, a relationship with God in my heart and everything it's else, it's, it's, it's good it's to me. Everything else is gravy to me. Yes. But um, in terms of the after effect, did it lead you to not getting called in places? Did, oh, it, no. did it lead to you being blacklisted? I hear the, the, the gospel fraternity is, is quite interesting in terms of oh, how they I, go about I would things. say that I've been to a few churches where I have been told by leadership that, Koda, we enjoy your ministry. Just don't sing that song. <gasps> <sighs> No way. Yes, way. <laughs> <laughs> so come and do everything else, but don't send that. Oh, I've been to a few places like that, but it's fine. It's their church. Okay. They say, they, I mean, it's a menu and that I presented and you say you don't want lobsters. That's fine. Ah. So that's fine. Interesting. Yeah. Now, looking at the current, you sang this, this song is a few years old. Yeah, but 2015. It's largely not changed. Matter of fact, it probably may some may argue that it's been a bit worse now in terms of how it's uh, churches are being portrayed on television how mm-hmm. there seems to be a whole emphasis on spirituality <laughs> like certain <laughs> mixtures mm-hmm. and how things are um after five years of singing a song well actually six years of singing a song like this <laughs> and hoping that it will make the impact that it, it, it or sustain like the sustain the impact do you feel disappointed that it didn't go down or hasn't gone down or hasn't caused a change in people as much as you expected? Um, I would say that the thought of it has run through my mind. Mm. And I nearly felt that what was the point even singing the song? But then I noticed that, you see, awareness creation takes time. Mm. At least now we are talking about it. Mm. In the past, it was like a no-go area. Mm. You know, touch not my anointed and, you know, all the stuff that goes up with that. And but now, now we can talk about it and say that is this thing scriptural? But the fact that we can even talk about it is good. Hmm. So I remember there's one man of God that visited my church and he was preaching now, he was sharing envelopes. The first thing he said was that, Hey, you go have Koda in this church. Hey, are <laughs> you going to sing about me? <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, but we had a good laugh over it. Okay, so okay. at least it's 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 cause awareness. Mm. You get the thing. Uh-huh. Mm. So. There's some questions I want to ask, but you know, I think I asked you. I asked you off air. <laughs> <laughs> but now let's get into the sub listening of the Kiteke album. Now, which one would you reckon that we start with? Um, let's start with uh, Asida. Okay. Now, tell me about the creation of the song. Asada was produced by an Ivorian uh-huh. who okay. uh, has had a stint with Freddie Mewe. Interesting. So it will be laced with a lot of francophone stuff mm-hmm. and uh, probably will get you twisting. Okay. Hopefully twisting to God. I'm into that. <laughs>
Album uh, Kitty K. Oh, I'm going to some messages now. Ask me, Kaz on Twitter says, Atsida equals Oblazo. My right. old lady is just <laughs> liking the jam. Some ever dance moves. I'm glad to know your old lady is. Interesting and amazing interview. I'm your number one fan, Coda. Please, Insemp is still relevant. What are you releasing, Insemp number two? I'm happy to be a part of Kitty Kid. I'm going to be playing it to my family and friends. So listen, it's a jam and an inspirational one. God bless you, my brother. From Pa Eddie. Coda's bass guitar um, tutorial helped me a lot in my music career. I am well recognized basis in my church now. God bless Whoa. you, Coda, from nice. Izzy in Achimota. Love it, love it, love it. Now, uh, so that is a jam. It's Thank an absolute you. jam. Thank it's you. an absolute jam. Here we go. Come on. So we're doing a sort of listening of the new album Kitty K right here on air. <laughs> now moving on to the next song. Which one are we going to, Coda? We are going to Game Over. It features a Nigerian that we know. Okay. Eben. Ah, yes. amazing. Yes, he's been came to Takradi. <laughs> Can you imagine? I love that. <laughs> yes, he came to Takradi to share the video with us for this song, Game Over. Okay, let's yes. take a listen.
Ibe featuring Ibe with Game Over. A new one of the album Kete K. If you're loving it, send me a message 0549986996. Code is in the studio. Now, moving on to the next one. <laughs> uh, the next one is called uh, Jesus. This, okay. is, uh, this is in the Caribbean rhythm. This Ooh. is a salsa. Okay. But I sing in Fanti. I like, I like, <laughs> I like, I like. Okay. the caribbean feel that makes you want to like samba or uh, do the cha-cha-cha or something know, right? <laughs> but why did you choose to experiment with different sounds with this new one um the tree <laughs> you know when you travel with i, I don't don't when i say train please for those of us who who've been blessed to travel outside the country mm, yeah that that one is not called a ktk mm. it's called a train <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm talking about ghana train it's called Choo -choo. ktk <laughs> 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 because if you've been in virgin atlantic before they are trained this won't make sense but you see the yeah. ghana train eh? yeah. okay, speed the ground will slow down <laughs> and it goes fast and slows down so there's several tempos mm. to the train when it's moving and that's the ktk for you okay okay i like so, it Jesus. so what's the next one we're going to so we still stay in the caribbean and okay. we do conquer which right. is a reggae song ah. I smoke no weed but I have the Holy Spirit in me come on the highest <laughs> <laughs> Yes, they part when they see you. 
see the lake can walk at the touch of your hand Even in the wilderness you make your way And if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death You are with me I know my God is a conqueror in about eight minutes but I'm gonna try and squeeze in as many songs as you possibly can <laughs> but I like this song so much it really grows I, on I you like it really grows on you <laughs> if it, you eventually get to like oh no it's a good song <laughs> very infectious <laughs> now which one is the next one we're going towards okay, we've, not, we've not done Amen yet have we no okay, okay, we, we, did, we started with Amen oh we did yes, okay yes, so yes, let's yes. do Nyamini Wo okay that one comes from the upper mm, upper east okay Region. All right. This is upper west. Okay. No, this upper east region. All right. Let's take a listen. Once I, once I, 
that is Nyaminuo by Koda of the new album KTK and it's such an incredible song honestly and number I David says that it's 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 amazing she loves this one. Oh, she, she loves it. <laughs> <laughs> but the big has that my sister Theodora Ban- Basin into me of Ghana Immigration Service wishing you all the happiness and joy coming in from Henrietta Aquafor in the Ministry of Finance. Now we're gonna wrap it up and no, time flies when you're having fun too much fun and um then I'll be wrapping it up with amen but before i let you go how can people get interactive with you how can people reach out to you enjoy the music okay. is it on all streaming platforms our videos Apart out can people get it dreams, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the physical ways on youtube it's coded studios okay. coded is k-o-d-e-d okay. studios on um facebook is koda kod okay uh, there's koda the bear too but not him <laughs> uh, it's koda the Ghanaian teddy bear and so uh, and then there's instagram okay. koded gh233 koded gh233 same okay. thing for um twitter Yes. Okay, okay, yes. okay. Two, three, three. Coded GH233. Love yes, it. Please. So, um, it's all on all stream platforms. That would yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. Please. yes. yes so, please. they should go out, stream it on, on Apple, on Boomplay, on Spotify, on, on, on everywhere. The the, oranges, everything. Ev- everywhere. <laughs> it's out on all platforms. And wrapping it up with Amen. Now, you have to tell us about Amen before we get into this one. Yes. Before we run out of time, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. Yes. Like I'm really excited about this. I, I we, we need to do this again. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. I, like I know. It. There are so many questions I have left on the table that I'm going to ask one day. But yes, thank you so much for coming. Thank like you, I truly you. appreciate it. this conversation was so much fun. I, I actually really me. enjoyed it. Thank you so much. So, amen. Tell us about it before we drop it. You know, um, I think that medically we are supposed to mask up. Mm-hmm. And that's the way to go. Yes. Good. But spiritually, we are not supposed to mask up. Mm. We are supposed to be speaking into our lives. Mm. And, and, and speaking positive things into our lives. So, that's where the inspiration came from that... Enough of and uh, uh, oh, this nation will never work. Enough of and then oh, this is my child he's never going to get smart. Mm. Enough of Charlie, this thing's probably the disease that's going to kill me. Mm. Let's speak positive, mm. speak blessing over our lives, mm. speak and say that we are the head and not the tail, mm. above and not beneath, and the lines are falling to us in, in pleasant, pleasant places. places. You're getting the yes. thing. So that's amen for you, a song of blessing that you play over yourself mm. before you step out. And we love it. We love it. We love Thank it. You. So this is Coda. Our man, go out, stream the music. Stream the music. Don't go and download it off an a website we don't know. Stream the music on all streaming platforms. It is KTK, the new album that's out. And this is Coda with Amen.